right how well the company is uh, equipped to meet its short term liabilities liquid cash or something which can be quickly converted into cash right to what extent the company has these kind of things to meet all its quick liabilities short term liabilities within the next one year what is the comfort of the company to pay all what it has to pay right that is what is being mentioned as a part of it liquidity ratios the most common of them being the current ratio quick ratio and the cash ratio so current ratio talk about total current assets divided by the current liabilities quick ratio will remove the inventory current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities cash ratio only focuses on cash by current liability three and yeah operating cash flow to total debt will tell me okay out in this case it's nowhere applicable but uh, otherwise what is the cash the company is available real cash because if i have to pay my debt it's not the profit that is very important it's the real cash that is available that is very important because i have to pay in real terms so how much is the cash that is generated from my operations to the debt which i need to pay because if more is generated the debt is more comfortable to be paid right and there is one more ratio probably which i would like to look at here cash flow from operations to pat so i mean uh, how is my cash flow see we said cash and profit are different stuff cash is a real world and profit is an accounting world so by what extent are are they both one and the same our cash flow is much lesser compared to the pat our cash flow is much higher compared to the pat so that is the one more ratio to be seriously looked at to see if there is some kind of manipulation exercise or some kind of uh, some kind of uh, extreme event that is happening so first let's focus on uh, liquidity part current assets by current liabilities so i can directly get both from the balance sheet current assets divided by current liabilities the logic is at least this should be above one right generally the old time systems used to talk about above two right but today we are uh, more in a world where uh, every company is trying to maintain a very less inventory so maintaining about two is a very difficult task for a lot of company as long as current assets are sufficient enough to pay the current liabilities at least you don't need to bother about or today the working capital loans are also more comfortably available so even if it is lesser it's not a big issue but see in case i can't raise the capital uh, working capital loan and all i'll get into trouble so that's where uh, there is a minimum logic that at least the current asset should be sufficient enough to cover the current liabilities which means greater than 1 and preferably after removing the inventory if they are able to cover it's even more comfortable which is your quick ratio current assets minus inventory so my, these are my current assets just removing the inventory if they are able to cover the current liabilities that's more comfortable if this ratio is above 1 that's more and more comfortable but you see in this company's case okay this is only 0.9 so there might be a possibility of a working capital loan especially when in case all my current liabilities need to be paid off within the next one month or two months because inventory is having a long cycle right yeah even we have seen 78 days on an approximate to go from here to 
production to sale and then another 20 more days on an average to convert into cash. So, if the current liabilities, if all the current liabilities have to be paid off within this period itself, within this 100 day period, then I will have to go for a working capital loan. But if it has to be paid off after uh, uh, 120 days approximately, then I don't need to go for a working capital loan. My inventory will produce the cash, which will, which I can use to pay off. So this ratio, comes to be on the comfort level, this uh, quick ratio should be close to 1 or 1 plus ideally. But around 1 is also good enough. I don't need to go for any kind of short term loan. Current ratio should be 2 is also better. If this sector is more inventory driven, current ratio even uh, something around 2 is also much better. Right? It, it would be better to have a higher current ratio itself. Because any of the inventory is uh, very high and inventory conversion period is very high. So it's better to hold more and more inventory itself. So because of more inventory, it's better to have a current ratio at least 1.5, 1.8, close to 2, not 1.2 and 1.1. Because uh, if, if I take out the impact of inventory, then my current assets are nothing. Cash or any other current asset, they are almost nothing. How do I meet my current liabilities? The only way is working capital loan. Right? If I have to be more and more self-sustainable, I should make sure that uh, the current ratio is close to 1.5, 1.8 and quick ratio is at least 1 plus. And only cash ratio is if all my current liabilities have to be paid within 1-2 months. Very quick. Within 1 month or something. Then only with cash I can do that because none of my other things will come out within 1 month. So that is where I am looking at how comfortable I am if uh, all have to be paid within this period itself. So only 4% I can pay. Only 4% of my current liabilities I can pay. And here at least 36% of my current liabilities I can pay if at all the payment has to happen immediately. This will tell me Immediately how much can I pay? What is my what is my current position? If at all I have to pay all my current liability. Only 36% I have to pay. Remaining 64% I have to borrow. But generally, the current liabilities means generally to be paid within the next one year. But if I am very pessimistic and everything has to be paid tomorrow itself, then my cash is sufficient only to pay 36% of them. Right, remaining 64% I have to borrow and then pay back. Then, to what extent is your cash flow from operation, cash sufficient enough to manage your debt? So, where I am looking at, the cash flow from operations only is being looked at because that's the sustainability. First year I don't have. From the second year, the cash flow from operations is this number divided by the debt. Debt also almost does not exist in this company. So, we can see that this number is above 1, which means the cash flow is much higher compared to the debt. So, comfortably I can pay off the debt. See, profit is higher compared to the debt is better. But cash flow higher compared to debt is even more better. Right? I have something real to pay off. And then, one more ratio is focusing on cash flow from operation to the net income or the final profit after tax. See, this is saying, at least in the last two years, 
cash flow from operations is lesser compared to the profit. So, which means the company is showing more profit, but the cash is lesser. This is a slightly investigating to be to be investigated kind of an issue. Of course, the first two years they have shown slightly higher also. This could be a temporary phase where the profit is higher but the cash is lesser. But generally advise that if I take a 4-5 periods together, right, for last 4-5 years or something, these two should be more or less the same. Right, if I just add up all these or take the average of all this, this is only 0.8. So, cash is lesser compared to the profit. Right? Generally, when the cash is over a period, at least a few year period, if the cash is much lesser compared to the profit, I can estimate that there is some cook up in the data. Some manipulation, some fudging must be happening on the financial statement because cash is a real world entity, whereas the profit is more like an accounting entity. So, overall, I should make sure that the cash is growing to get the valuation more and more. Profit growing will not lead into much of a valuation. Only when the cash is growing, it will really increase the value of the company. Because all the valuation models really depend on the cash flow, not the profitability. Because profitability is more like an accounting concept. Not too much of trust on the profitability. Cash is a real world concept and finance believes only in reality, not the not the world of bookkeeping or kind of stuff. So that's where uh, the real world numbers only are typically are taken. So even in your valuation, even though you make a forecasted balance sheet and a PL statement, you have to create a cash flow statement from that, which will uh, help you in doing the valuation. Right. Then coming on to one more set of ratios, which is your growth ratio. Growth is a very normal. By what percent each of them has grown compared to the previous year. Sales. The current year sales minus the last year sales by last year sales. Percentage growth. So here I can take current year sales. Minus last year sales divided by last year sales. So, in this year the sales have grown up by almost 47%. But at least in the last two years, the sales is going growing at around 12%. So, another better way to really relate. The sales of this company are growing faster than the GDP of the country. GDP of the country is growing only at around 8%, 7%, 6%, 7 8 I mean, in a year if you take, somewhere around 7 But the sales of this company is growing much faster than the GDP. So, even for your forecast, you can take that kind of relationship. Okay, if the GDP is growing at this level, what is the sales growing at? Right? Similarly, uh, you can look at the profit, operating profit, which is the EBITDA, at what rate it is growing. EBITDA also has grown up by 41% in the first year, but in the recent case, EBITDA has grown at around 22%. 5%, but 22%. EBITDA has gone up. Growing is growing much faster, which means the operating profit of the company is growing much fast bigger, which is an indicator that uh, the costs are going slightly lesser, which is a good sign. Then look at uh, PAT. PAT wise also, we see uh, this number.
PAT also has gone up by 29%, whereas here it is growing by 16%. So at least what we are able to see is, compared to the sales, the profits are growing much higher, which is a good sign. Sales are growing at some percentage, but the profits are growing at a much bigger percentage, which means the costs have gone down compared to the sales. Costs going down compared to sales. It's not that costs have gone down compared to sales. Costs have gone down compared to sales, which is what is resulting in your profitability is going up, which is a good indicator, right? Because that itself is contributing to the growth of the company. Because at the end, profitability is growing up could very well result in the cash going up, which could result in the value of the company also going up drastically. Of course, EPS and PAT are one and the same. Because EPS is nothing but PAT divided by the total number of shares. So EPS growth and PAT growth are more or less one and the same itself. So the key thing as a part of the growth ratios for me is, compared to the sales growth, how is my other areas growing? Right, sales are growing at certain level. But if the profitability is growing much more than the sales, then my costs are going down. Costs are growing at a decreasing rate, which will contribute to the profitability more higher. Right? So, once I do all these kind of ratios, they will give me different kinds of pointers as to whether this uh, company is doing well from the perspective of profitability, operation, solvency, liquidity, right? Uh, different kinds of perspectives. Growth, different kinds of perspectives. I will get a pointer on whether the company is doing well or not well or even from the market valuation ratios. So, looking at all these things, evaluating the performance of the company, we are trying to come out with the context of whether it is worth looking at uh, investing in this company. Right, profitability, ROE is one ratio which I look at as a very key instrument if I am looking at investing. The, the solvency ratios and uh, that Altman, that score kind of scores are some of the key things which I will look at when I am focusing on the uh, bank giving the loan to this company. So, different people use different ratios for different purposes. Right? 